Okay, so are you ready for a deep dive? Always. Today we're diving into, uh, well, it's a question that's fascinated people for centuries. It's about Shakespeare. Oh, okay, Shakespeare. You mean like, did he actually write all those plays? Exactly. It's like the ultimate conspiracy theory, right? <laughs> we're looking at this YouTube video and it makes a case that Christopher Marlowe. Marlowe? Yeah, Christopher Marlowe, the playwright that he might be the real author behind, well, some or maybe even all of Shakespeare's work. Huh. I've heard whispers about this theory. It's pretty out there. <laughs> it is, but it's also super intriguing. So, like, just to set the stage, we're talking about Elizabethan theater, right? Right. And back then, using pen names and all those hidden meanings, that was kind of their thing. Adds to the mystery, don't you think? Totally. Okay, so this video we're looking at focuses on these four plays. They're all about the Edwards, the Kings, Edward II, Edward III, and Edward IV. Have you heard of those? Yeah, and they're traditionally attributed to different authors, although Edward II, that one's definitely Marlowe. Right. But this video, it claims that Marlowe actually wrote all four. What do you make of that? Bold claim. They do point to some, well, stylistic things, you know, phrases, themes that repeat in those plays. OK, so kind of like fingerprints, similar style. Yeah, something like that. But there's this other thing. They talk about a woodcut emblem. It's an anchor of hope. And it appears on works by both Marlowe and Shakespeare. An emblem. Hold on. Are we talking about the Da Vinci Code here? Well, not exactly, but it's those little details, right? Mm -hmm. The symbol itself was pretty common back then. It represented, like, hope and steadiness, all that. Okay, I'm following. But why is it so important that it shows up with both of them, Marlowe and Shakespeare? It's all about how it appears. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes more obvious. They're implying that if Marlowe faked his death, this could be in his way of marking his territory, you know? Like, I, I was here. A secret code. Now that's interesting. But wouldn't some people say it's just a coincidence? I mean, you can't prove authorship just based on a couple of phrases and a symbol. You're right to be cautious. It's all about interpretation, right? Just because things look similar doesn't mean they are connected. It could be shared influences, common themes, that sort of thing. We have to remember that. So this whole emblem thing could be a dead end. Potentially. Yeah. But we can't ignore the historical context either. Remember Marlowe? He had some controversial opinions. Some people think those views could have put him in hot water. Oh, right. Like maybe faking his death wasn't just about protecting his legacy as a playwright. Maybe he was worried about his own safety. Now you're getting it. Hmm. And that leads us to another piece of the puzzle. Nobody. Nobody. Like as in there's nobody home. Yeah. Between 1605 and 1610, this word nobody starts showing up everywhere. Plays, writings, all over. There's even a whole play from 1606 called Nobody and Somebody. A play titled Nobody, that can't be a coincidence. Right. It's almost too perfect. It's like someone's waving their hand, but they don't want to fully come out of hiding. Mm. Remember, writers using fake names, secret codes, that was common to avoid censorship. So maybe Marlowe, assuming he was alive, used this Nobody character to kind of wink at the audience. Exactly. A little literary Easter egg, you could say. And this is where it gets even more interesting. Oh, you can't leave me hanging. Tell me more. So in 1604, there's this publication news from Gravesend. Okay. The author, completely anonymous, brags that they can write more in one week than, get this, seven bachelors of art could in a year. Now that's cocky. Do they have any idea who wrote that? Your guess is as good as mine. But the video suggests this confident tone, the sheer amount they're claiming to write, it could point back to Marlowe. Oh, I see it. It's too perfect. A playwright everyone thinks is dead writing under a secret name, and all of a sudden some anonymous author is bragging about writing a ton really fast. Exactly. It's definitely a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. But of course we have to think about other possibilities. Right, right, of course. Maybe this was just some new writer trying to make a name for themselves, you know, stirring up drama. Yeah, good point. We have to be skeptical too. So we have this anchor of hope popping up, this nobody character, and now this mysterious author. Anything in the plays themselves, anything that supports this theory about Marlowe. Yeah, the video does this deep dive into the text looking for parallels, and they highlight some interesting phrases. Okay, like what? So in Edward I, which is the one that's supposed to be by George Peel, there's a line, makes their weapons wound the senseless winds. Okay, and Edward II is the one we know is Marlowe, right? Yep, and in that play, there's this line that's very similar, and make your strokes to wound the senseless light. Wow, those are really close. Is that like a normal thing for Elizabethan theater? Or could that be more than just a coincidence? Honestly, that's the million dollar question. It could just be coincidence or maybe common phrases that playwrights tossed around. Right, right. 
But when you look at how many parallels there are, plus all the other clues, it does make you wonder. It's like one little clue by itself, maybe not a big deal, but when you put them all together, it's like a whole different picture. Exactly, like solving a puzzle. One piece doesn't tell you much, but put them all together. And you start to see the whole thing. I can see why this whole theory is so fascinating. Okay, but to be fair, what about the people who think Shakespeare really was Shakespeare? What's their side of the story? Well, they say, look, there's no actual proof connecting Marlowe to any of Shakespeare's plays. They point to historical records, Shakespeare's life, the theater troops he worked with, even his death in 1616. For them, that's more convincing than some vague similarities in writing. So it's like hard evidence versus interpretation. Pretty much. And don't forget, Elizabethan theater was all about collaboration. Playwrights worked together, they shared ideas, they even borrowed lines or whole scenes from each other. So even if Marlowe was somehow involved, it doesn't mean he wrote everything himself. It could have been a team effort. Exactly. We have to remember that it wasn't as simple as one author, one play. This is making me think differently about history, you know? It's not always so black and white. Okay, but let's say, just for fun, that Marlowe did fake his death. What was he doing all that time? Hiding out and secretly writing? That is the question, isn't it? And that's where <laughs> things get really interesting. There are theories, of course. Oh, I love a good theory. Let's hear them. So Marlowe's on the run. He needs a good cover story. What was he up to? Well, one theory is, get this, he became a spy. A spy? Seriously? Yeah, like a secret agent. Remember it was a crazy time back then? Queen Elizabeth, all those plots against her? Someone like Marlowe with his way with words. He could have been dangerous. But wait, was there any sign that he was into that kind of stuff before? No proof he was like a trained spy or anything. Yeah. But he was definitely on the radar of the authorities. Right. His plays, they weren't afraid to stir the pot. Exactly. So some people think he might have been recruited, you know, gather information, spread rumors. Wow. From rebel playwright to government agent. That's quite the change. What makes people think that? Well, after 1593, Marlowe basically vanishes. There's nothing about him, no records. There he goes. Right. So they say this lack of evidence, plus all that political turmoil, it makes sense. Hide in plain sight. Okay, but that's a lot of what ifs. Yep. Any actual proof for this spy theory? Not really. No secret diaries confessing to espionage or anything. Okay, so probably not a spy then. But even if he wasn't a full-blown 007, he could still have been involved in some shady stuff. Hmm. He was not one to shy away from a little danger. True. True. Okay, so spy theory, maybe not. Any other ideas? Well, another theory is that maybe Marlowe just wanted a clean slate. You mean start over? Yeah. Maybe he was tired of the pressure, the attention, all that. I can see that. Yeah. Being a celebrity playwright back then, probably not all sunshine and roses. Especially with the government watching your every move. Exactly. So maybe he said, that's it, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Started a new life somewhere new, maybe even with a new name. Wow. The mysterious disappearance of Christopher Marlowe. It does have a nice ring to it, doesn't it? It really does. Whether he was a spy, a runaway, or, you know, some people still believe it, the secret genius behind Shakespeare. It's like he's a puzzle that we might never solve. And that's what makes it so fascinating, right? History isn't always clear cut. Sometimes the best questions are the ones we can't answer, for sure. I like that. Like we've been on this adventure, digging for clues, debating theories, all about this mysterious playwright. And who knows, maybe someday, Someone will find the missing piece, the one that explains it all. Until then, we keep searching. Well, that's our deep dive into the Marlowe Shakespeare conspiracy. What do you think? Was Marlowe a secret agent? A runaway? Or did he pull off the greatest disappearing act in literary history? Let us know your theories. Join the conversation on our social media and don't miss our next episode. We're diving into another mystery that's sure to get you thinking.